The apparatus we've got here is to investigate the absorption of gamma rays through um, aluminium and lead. We've got a cobalt source in this castle here, got a counter and Geiger Muller tube and the various uh, samples of aluminium and lead which are available offline. This is called a universal castle and it's used to hold the GM tube at a specific distance away from the uh, source which will be mounted in this tray here held in that. Um, <clears throat> This is my personal preference to use this rather than the horizontal uh, situations because the source can't fall out. Uh, if you're not available, if you can't find any of these in catalogues, which I believe they're not selling them anymore, it won't be too much of a stretch to get one of these 3D print, uh, printed and running. Um, I will be putting the values of the thicknesses, which I'll be measuring myself. Um, on screenshots as I take the uh, time intervals of the various absorptions uh, but that is the basic setup right for the experiment to uh, be as effective as possible we need to take out all uncontrolled um, errors that may occur to that end I'm going to be inserting this um, hole in here and that should be at a height which is just allows the thickest lead sample to be uh, in, put into position. I may actually move the uh, I may move that up because the so that is effectively going to be our zero. I'm going to set the timing uh, options to give 60 second counts and that's going to be done throughout it here. So we're all set ready for a uh, zero. I'll start this going and then speed up the filming. You can see that this gives us a value of 22 counts in that minute. We now need to take out the tray and insert the cobalt source. And we run the timing for this. And that gives us a, a 60 second count of 6,157. I'm now going to go to the thickest layer, level, thickest layer, which is going to be that uh, lead. I will be putting its dimensions up. You can see I'm not in the path of the uh, gamma beam. Doing it this way allows you to do, uh, be able to determine the size of 
uh, axes on your graph. And we have a value now of 2114. I'm going to take the lead away before I measure this and the, uh, get the next sample. So I'm going down to the thinnest sample R of uh, aluminium. I'm going to put that above there and start. From now on uh, I'll be putting the data up as I go. And we have a value of 5871. Five six four nine. Five five two zero. Five two eight four. Five four four eight. Five six six two. Because we're plotting as we go, I can actually run this one again. This is 42.1. Five one, five four. Four nine three four. Four six three eight. Four three three one. Four three five three. Four one three two. Four zero eight seven. Three eight three nine. Four 
Three eight zero zero. Four two four zero. Three four, sorry, three nine four two. Three seven one seven. Three four five nine. Three one zero eight. This is uh, two five two seven. And this is the last one we need to do because we've already done the thickest one. So I'm going to take this out. I can put. Right, so putting away the sauce. Put its castle ready to receive it. Pull it out and I'll be tempted to move this across so it, so it doesn't get dropped. And finished.